Welcome back. Poor maintenance culture has been identified as a major setback for infrastructure development in Nigeria. There are indeed good sporting facilities in the country, but without proper care, they become non-functional and abandoned. On our big story tonight, our sports correspondent, Austin Okonakwam, highlights the current state of stadia in the country. Is the difference. Nothing tastes like my Indomie. <laughs> A fast paced start to the game. Both sides not willing to give their. These are pictures from the friendly match played in June 2011 between Nigeria and Argentina. Bit of skill from Joel Obi, still the chances on Uche. Playing tough looked good, scoreboard was functional, the Abuja National Stadium was beautiful. And for a project that got a whopping 54 billion naira, you struggle to understand why maintenance wasn't part of the plan. And this is the consequence of neglecting maintenance. They give the contract to a specialist company to carry the maintenance, and after two, three years, the governor goes out. The next guy that comes in can say, no, we don't want this guy. I want my guy to start carrying out the maintenance. And that guy that he wants to give the contract to might not have the technical te 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 ability to get it done. They start using pipes to water a pitch that's supposed to have a sprinkler system. Let's go to Kaduna. The Amadou Bello Stadium hosted the African Cup of Nations qualifying match between Nigeria and Egypt in March last year. Weed has now taken over the place of spectators. The uh, governor have given approval for the ministry to go ahead to establishing what we refer to as neighborhood sporting arenas. Good plans by the state government, but if it's not executed by professionals, it will only result in more damage. Welcome to the Namdi Azikiwe Stadium, Enugu. From the main entrance, this facility is begging for attention. This is the home of Enugu Rangers. From a distance, the playing tough looks good. But when it rains, the problems are exposed. And I remember when Rangers qualified for Champions League just last year. NFF said, or El Cap said, they cannot play this match here. Why? They say they don't have press center, they don't have toilet facilities, and a lot of other things that's supposed to be to make it a standard stadium. It is only when you bring in the private sector who will invest and want to get profit that he will reignite it the way he runs his own private business. The Liberty Stadium made shooting stars a renowned football club. It has been abandoned since 2009. We were denied access, but from this exterior view, you be the judge. The National Stadium is through Larry Lagos. It was on this ground Nigeria won a maiden AFCON trophy in 1980. It has been abandoned since 2002, and now things are falling apart. We have seen the edifice in a, is in a sorry state. The level of dilapidation is embarrassing. It can never be equated with our civilization as a people. And so whatever step that can be taken must be taken to address it. We have a matches in National Stadium. I cannot wait. Why wouldn't I want to lead them out from the tunnel as president and go and shake their feet and look at this National Stadium that I reversed so much as a child? So it's my dream to see them play here. And whatever recommendation that you think, I think I'm going to have an input. It's not a total failure for infrastructure in Nigeria. Lagos State has started renovation works. Aquibom also has a standard stadium. Benway.
Katsina are also doing good. And so that's it. For any country sports to win, infrastructure development must be top-notch. This national stadium in Lagos has produced and featured world-class footballers. And so you start wondering, how did the country abandon it to get to this state? And that right there is a major problem of sports in Nigeria. And until that problem is solved, it will remain a problem. From the National Stadium in Lagos, Nigeria, Austin Okonakpan, Channels Television News. Taste is the difference. Nothing tastes like my Indomie. <laughs>more than 40 million of Nigeria's 96.4 million adult population do not have bank accounts and are therefore excluded from all financial activities. That's according to the report from the Enhancing Financial Innovation and Access, Athena, a financial sector development organization in Nigeria. The chairman of the Athena board, Mrs. Modupe Ladipo, highlights the negative impact of the huge unbanked sector on the economy at a workshop in Abuja to encourage financial inclusiveness. According to her, there is urgent need to leverage on the opportunities provided by mobile banking in order to grow the nation's financial inclusion data. Five years ago, when Nigeria set the agenda for financial inclusion, some of the dignitaries in this hall, including Her Majesty the Queen of the Netherlands and the Mayor of Kano, were in attendance. They are here again at this workshop for financial inclusion to assess how Nigeria has performed in the last five years and chart the way forward. In her remarks, the chairman, board of directors of Enhancing Financial Innovation and Access, decries the huge number of adults that are financially excluded and its impact on the economy. For the first time since we were conducting the survey, we saw an increase in the number of people that were excluded. The adult population growth outpaced the growth in the bank population. The excluded increased from 36.9 million to 40.1 million. I don't think that this is we, anybody should be happy with this statistic. Chatting the way forward, the keynote speaker highlights the opportunities that exist in using mobile banking to grow financial inclusiveness. The combination of a strong agent network and mobile money could have a tremendous impact on financial inclusion and overall economic development in Nigeria. Just think of the powerful platform mobile phones offers for advancing financial inclusion. The representative of the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria also explained some government policies to encourage financial inclusiveness. The Central Bank of Nigeria has initiated several development financing interventions to create access to credit for farmers and micro and small businesses. This includes the MSME Development Fund, the TL KYC Mobile Money. All these have been put in place to ensure that the rate of exclusion is drastically reduced. An estimated 40% of Nigeria's financially active adults are in the rural communities without access to banking services. Hence, experts argue strongly that there is an urgent need to leverage the advantages provided by mobile banking to grow financial inclusiveness by the year 2020. 14 boys and girls drawn from public schools across the southwest have been awarded the Shell Nigeria Exploration and Production Company's National Cradle to Career Scholarship. So far, 274 awards covering tuition, books and full boarding have been given by SNAPCO. Lives are being changed and future transformed courtesy of SNEPCO scholarship. These children, the best from public schools, will now be having an all-expense-paid prestigious secondary school education here at Leedford Gate College, courtesy of SNEPCO and their partners. To us in SNEPCO, education is key to national development. And our country do require these focused developmental activities. It is the answer to today's challenges and an anchor for a better and brighter future. The program, Cradle to Career, started in 2014 as SNEPCO's effort to help bridge educational inequality resulting from social economic differences.
reaffirms your commitment to the vision of truly providing education opportunities to the economically disadvantaged children in the remote areas with low literacy rates, reduce the number of school dropout before completion of basic education, as well as provide education to children under the poverty line. Their parents, their would-be colleagues, friends, family members, the sponsors, royal father, and guests have come to join these 14 lads whose academic training has taken a turn for good. We started this scheme in the belief that we could actually give opportunities, and that's what we're doing, to brilliant children who are from less privileged socioeconomic backgrounds to actually aspire to become what they want to be. So today, as a brilliant kid, you can afford to dream. And the selection process is such that we work with NECO to actually select pupils from public schools. My experience so far in this school has been really amazing. I've learned new things and new ways of learning. My chairs have been my learning very easy. A world-class place, conducive environment, cozy classrooms, recreational place, and above all, qualitative education is what Lead Fort Gate College is offering, making it a choice place for Snap Coast scholars. Olo Phillips, Channels Television News. Time now to check in on the day's business stories. Here's Emana Amawe. You first. First Bank. Thank you for staying with us. Welcome to Business News. A sub-national index launched today by the National Competitiveness Council of Nigeria has ranked Lagos State top among the 36 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory. At the launch of the index in Lagos, the survey provided an opportunity for experts to discuss the path for growth and economic diversification for Nigeria. The top national index is the very first of its kind in Nigeria with focus on human capital, infrastructure, economy and institutions. The survey covers the 36 states of the Federation as well as the Federal Capital Territory and ranks Lagos overall in all fronts. Chief Executive of the National Competitiveness Council of Nigeria, Mr. Chika Modi, says the survey helping states to redirect their parts. And from the bottom, Gombe is 37th, Bono 36th, Kebi 35th, Yobe 34th, Bauchi 33rd, Katsina 32nd, Sokoto 31, Adamawa 38th, Nasarawa 29th, and everyone is somewhere in between. Discussions simplify the purpose of the index, which includes the elevation of national conversations around the dependence on oil and the need for aggressive economic diversification. We are self-deceptive. We say that unemployment is 15%. In other words, out of every 100, only 15 have jobs. I think we're reading our indices upside down. I think it's the other way. Out of every 100, only 15, right, are employed. An agitational approach to realizing restructuring will take us a longer time. It's actually what can we take out of that exclusive list that is restricting the states from actualizing their potentials. The capital market remains the place and the appropriate market for state governments to fund their long-term development objectives. The index is planned to be published on annual basis with an aim to consistently engage state governments on the report. We will learn from what has happened with this one and with every activation we expect an improvement. Although the sub-national index covers four main areas, the report shows that all states performed strongly in at least one of the four broad themes and 23 indicators. After three straight positive sessions, profit-taking in consumer and industrial goods stocks pulled the all-share index back by a slim margin at the close of Thursday's trading session. Chimeze Obiwagu has a summary of the day's transactions. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. The market couldn't sustain the three-day positive momentum today owing to the volume of trade on Nigerian breweries, which pulled the share price of the company down. About 5 million shares of Nigerian breweries were traded, and that accounted for about 20% of the total value done today. 
Because of the four naira 77 cover loss by Nigerian breweries, the overall market index dropped, though marginally, by 0.03%. Total volume traded was about 318 million shares, valued at almost 4 billion naira in 5,472 deals. Market breadth was quite positive. 27 stocks posted gains, while 18 posted declines. Top of the list of gainers in terms of price movement was FBNH, while custodian and allied insurance led the decliners. Our traders say the interest in Nigerian breweries today shows there's a lot of opportunities in that stock and there's every tendency there would be a reversal on the overall index on Friday. And that was the stock market report. I'm Chimezie Obi Iwago. And it's a broadly mixed picture for some of the world's leading stock markets as investors react to U.S. President Donald Trump's nomination of Jerome Powell as the new Fed chair and the release of the tax reform bill as well as the latest regional corporate earnings. Let's see the numbers. And that's it on Business News tonight. I'm Imana Amawe. It's back to Amarachi. You first. First Bank. Thanks a lot, Imana. Still ahead on the news at 10, Nigerian women's team leave for Morocco ahead of the crucial under-20 Women's World Cup qualifier. Stay with us.